Yep. I should uh, actually have a volume control that really blasts this thing, and I can adjust how big a cricket we is, but how loud the noise is of the crickets. Our silence to do the right thing and understand how to do the right thing. And um, really, uh, this week was pretty interesting, and I appreciate all the. Uh, all of a sudden, I've had some feedback coming back about what I do or what I'm not doing or whatever, and I appreciate all the discussion because it helps me think about things. But one co what did come very really clearly to me, and I have to let just put this out there, it, it, it's kind of universal. You, you can't, you really, when you listen to what I'm telling you, you can't take what you thought you knew, what you thought you've learned, uh, the things, the determinations you think you've made or that you have made that you thought were right. You have to, as I've been telling you, you got to put everything in a possibility and a probability or plausibility. you got to put categories up. The things that I tell you, the way I tell you, and sometimes more complete than others, you necessarily must stick them in their own category without without uh, judging that or refiltering it through your understanding. And this is be I'm becoming more and more aware of the of this this problem. And you you cannot when I, it's very important. You can be book learned, but you can't be, uh, you won't necessarily be um, experience born to do things and do correctly. When I can sit down like I have in the last few days with a couple, the few people that have approached me, and all in earnest, we're trying to figure this out. You quite, can't quite get a handle on what I'm doing, and yet I can explain, sit down and explain the forks in the path that they've accepted that were not true or the assumptions and presumptions they put upon what I'm saying or what they think I'm saying, as put through their filters. And I can fix those things. Is it, uh, that then orients their mind. Uh, it's really a deprogramming. There's a deep deprogramming in this in what's going on, and it's pretty fascinating to watch and listen to. And it uh, really does cause, it's an obstacle to us that we may not be aware of. And I'm kind of out, uh, literally, you know, behind the woodshed, it's literally, I don't have that many people to uh, interact with. And frankly, no one really seems to be interested. And that's, that's okay. We got, I got enough work. I got enough things we're doing. And I tell you, I come here every week to tell you how we're doing it and that it's, it's going on. You just listen to what I'm saying. Things do happen in the right direction. Uh, but it's because we're out there working with, I'm working with people that have seen what's going on. They don't, they've realized they don't have to understand everything. But they trust, at least when I'm working with those people, well, they trust that what I'm going to tell them, and they quickly find out it's true, uh, what what they can do to catapult themselves into a better place quickly and start to become even more effective. And it's an ongoing work. It's not something uh, that you can just say, I know it all. There's lots of problems that creep in once you finally get involved. They are real-time problems that have to be resolved. But, you, again, it's a spirit in us, uh, the people I work with, we're here to First of all, make sure everyone's got the right education on stuff, on what's really happening, how we're being blindsided, or how to see the transparent, all this stuff, and trying to find ways to communicate to people. Sometimes I may not do so well that way, and I don't think I do so bad. It's just gotta, you gotta be willing to listen to what I'm gonna say. And I kinda, I don't cut the, I don't, uh, there's not a lot of fluff in behind what I'm saying. And I don't do much humor, although I'd like to. Uh, off the radio, I, I think I'm, I'm a, I'll look for anything to make a joke, but, uh, not to make it frivolous, but there's lots of stuff in the world that's pretty funny. In light of what we're facing and why I come here and why people listen, there's a serious, serious problem. And I see it's all, my thought is, not that it's anything's all, a, a major part of this is our improper perception of what's happening. Our attachment, we, we, we are really are, like to put millstones around us and and then we try to crawl around, uh, try to get effective once we got all these millstones we put on us. I'm talking mental millstones. And as I think about that, the mental millstone, uh, maybe the title of the of the broadcast. But uh, as I remember that, uh, for some reason, it triggers that I need to identify the broadcast as uh, uh, BTWRLM252, I think is this week's uh, broadcast. For the content and the broadcast, you get the links. When I ever, ever get to them, now we'll try to get to them pretty quick. Anyway, we put these mental millstones uh, in us, and then we think we can go around the world uh, pretty quickly and get things done. And uh, anyway, so 
without belaboring this, and I don't really want to talk more about it, I, I appreciate, again, the feedback I got this week was uh, pretty interesting and fun. Uh, serious, because it, 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 we need to orient ourselves into proper thought. And then, hopefully, the res- resolution really comes out to now that there's a better sight, a better understanding of how this really kind of works out without the baggage we would come or millstones we put around our neck on how we think we're understanding what I would say. In application, that path is a lot clearer. And so I would caution everybody who listens to this broadcast who thinks they know what they think they know and puts that on what I'm saying, uh, you're making, you're doing yourself a disservice. And you can disagree with me on that is fine. That's up to you. I can't force it. I don't try to force anybody. I do want you to, I certainly would help, hope the best for you better than yourself, apparently, when you dismiss what I'm saying or you condition what I'm saying or you think you've understood what I'm saying and that you've come to a conclusion that I'm incorrect. Uh, my thought, well, my now my this last few weeks, is not just this week, but the last few weeks it's been coming around. There's not a clear understanding really of what I'm telling people. And so I'm going to, as I do, I try to work on how to best approach this and better communicate to people. And I, again, it's ongoing work. I actually don't do so bad. Uh, and, and I want to thank Frumpy again. Uh, it was kind of an interesting chat we had a few weeks and weeks and weeks ago, I guess it was. And he had a question. He came with a, he had an earnest desire to understand something. And in a few moments, we were able to work out the misapprehension he had on a particular subject matter. So it's, it's just a matter, I think, of the really settling down and really focusing. That's what I tell you, folks. It's so important. If I can reduce everything down to, to uh, some of the problem we have is there's just too much. Reduce it down to your problem. Find a, find a question, an earnest question you have, and seek the answer in earnest, not that you go impose upon uh, the world what you thought it was. I think we go a lot quicker. And for my, for the part, my part that I hope I'm playing, anybody who dismisses what I'm saying or has an argument with me, I, I can almost guarantee you have a, mis- a misapprehension of something, and you're imposing your own prejudice, which I see as a prejudice. It's your thought that you know something that I was saying that you thought was right that you don't understand that's not. And it, again, it's not to the point that I'm saying I know all. What, what it is is that I have not been shown wrong, and I don't mean about people that might come along and talk with me. I'm talking about in the in the proof of the, our experience of what we do to address the wrongs around us. There's not been any wrong, I mean a wrong. I don't mean just maybe an error that you need to fix. I mean a wrong. There's not been a misstep, like if I could say it that way. There's not been a, a jeopardy caused on anybody. There's, And then, most importantly, there's been advancement into the better, what we can see was abandoned and what was thrown down in us as people. What was destroyed in us as people. We surmount all this nonsense. But we can only do it in a small way. And that seems to be a big a big proof for people. Well, what have you done? As I was talking to someone last night, I said, well, what we do, we can't promote. We're not, we're not in a thing we can promote. He wants to say, well, let's promote this. I said, well, there's nothing, there's nothing to promote. It's, it's responsibility and action. No one seems to want to be really doing it. I say no one, but there's very few that really want to do that. And we can't, pre-promote. We can't promise anything. Because literally, folks, we're in, we're in this war where there anybody rarely recognizes it. And I guess it's a, a graded war. I guess you can say it's a mini, mini, mini battle or a major battle. Folks, we're just in a problem that we need to resolve in so many areas. And so for what I talk to, I can't guarantee to anybody what I'm telling you will work because we're having to fight the enemy. You go into war, you can't expect a guarantee to win. Uh, the only thing you can do is can persist to, to fight against the oppressor. And so I've come up with, in ex- looking at lots of things over many decades, uh, hearing, it's kind of funny, Not it's not funny, when I say funny, it's disappointing in some regard, but, but it's funny that people see old information as new, and they regurgitate uh, these things. And so the things that i it's like the 30-year recurrence. The revolution is a 30-year recurrence of bad information or the the uh, cream that rose to the caucusocracy top uh, of the bad information that gets regurgitated about every 20 or 30 years, typically 30. And I'm hearing it again, and I'm saying, you know, I ran, I moved away, I didn't run from anything. I moved aside all that nonsense to give me a better view. 
and got me here. And today, I don't, like I said, there's not many mistakes that we make that are so, so bad that uh, we can't correct them if we find that they are a mistake. We're pretty methodical about how we set out to move forward and what we move forward on. It's all based on uh, really the facts, the condition. Every condition's different. Everyone you meet makes a variable. It's really kind of a fascinating observation, but you still have to move forward. And again, uh, you're not going to move forward. You want to fight with me, you're, 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 pit, you're pitching the wrong fight, and it's going to waste time for everybody, and you're not going to be effective. Uh, I'm not here to fight with anybody. I'm here to give an insight. I'm here to uh, expand the comprehensive apprehension and the uh, engagement level. And first of all, that seems to be the problem. The actual engagement is lacking. There's lack of experience in what we're doing against a formidable foe that requires that you be active. They push that that requirement in international law to the limit. So uh, anyway, I don't know what more to say. Uh, I my only hope, it's a hope, is that you listen to what I'm saying, you hear what I'm saying. However that works, listening and hearing, hearing and listening, you do it both, and then you take an earnest, not an argument with me. You find out what I'm saying that you can go prove is correct. Don't assume upon me things that don't exist. Don't force my my observations into what you think you know because as I talk particularly with people on their problems with what I'm saying it's a misunderstanding that they have about what I was saying and be, and I find that it was because of a misunderstanding or a misapprehension or a mis uh, uh, misstudy, a misresearch thinking that what you researched was really the uh, relevant or important thing and it actually isn't, it's not in play and then no expectation this is the other problem, people have a long People have a real problem with that. They're, it's like it's a failed proof. Then it's all you, you know. You're, you're talking nonsense. No, how can you walk into something without having a proof uh, that what you're doing is right? Well, that's the battle. There is no spoon, folks. They tell it. In fact, I came up in the chat. I don't know if anybody understand it, understood what I said in the UCY chat. But there is no spoon, folks. This is what they get you to perceive, and they've got us perceiving all kinds of stuff that ain't so, and we attach it to ourselves. And then we think we, we, because we know something, like I was talking with someone last night, well, we, we got to promote this. And I said, you know, I don't know the product that there is to promote. This is not a product we can promote. This is us taking responsibility. That's a variable. There's no proof in all this. And that scares people, apparently. And, and so, and maybe let's, let's touch last week, because I, I thought I was doing the, and, and, and thank you for everyone that tuned into it last week and did all the downloads and all that. Appreciate all that. But I haven't gotten any response about that. Now, I didn't have a full amount of information, so I figured I'd have some substantive response and say, well, you got this wrong and this wrong, but nobody responds. Bill. And I don't think I had it so wrong either, so they're not going to step up. What's there to step up to in that regard also? And if someone had it wrong on the side that uh, the people that I'm saying, hey, you got to get it better, they're not going to necessarily contact me. Uh, they're not going to admit they've got a wrong perception. They're not going to even contact me to tell me how I got it wrong. Because then they're going to have to face face what I would ask, because I'm now wanting to know about what they're doing. Why is it do, Why are they going down that track? Uh, one thing I can amend from last week is I didn't know what court they were going into. It sounded like from a two-second statement by the guy who is going to be, who's their attorney, on the Bundy issue for the quiet title action. It, apparently they are filed in the state court, but that made even their water claim even worse, because... You don't quiet title on water. And so there's a misunderstanding, and I don't want to condemn that. I want to I want to expose there's a better way to approach it. I want to expose that you need to approach it that better way. Otherwise, the other side takes advantage of your ignorance. They take advantage of how you misspoke. They take advantage. I was telling something yesterday, somebody yesterday. If you don't, as I talk to these land disposal laws, if you don't speak inside the language of the law and you allow someone to bring language in that doesn't belong there, You've just diminished your grant. You've diminished your property rights. Because the one who's bringing it in usually is an authority that's going to take that diminishment now, which they can now regulate because it now has a servitude on it, and they can regulate that servitude. Uh, in a case where I just talk about in per, so that you know it's not so esoteric, it was the simple word we would just think the operator within a mining context. It's the operator of a mine. Most miners don't understand that they're not an operator uh, and just to give you a basic uh, basic definition, which is not complete, but for this point of definition, an operator regarding mining is really a contractor to the United States government advancing a project or plan or demonstration that the government has set up. 
You're the worker in a project. You're not the grantee earning a livelihood with a possession. And they throw, uh, the government agencies and, the, and all the forms will throw an operator in there, all the regulations throw operator, and the mining goes, the miner says, okay, I'm an operator. Doesn't stay true to the language of the grant, which he's a grantee. You're not an operator. And so, the, as we were talking, I was talking to someone last night, this simple little attachment that we do to ourselves in the mining community, uh, and you will do this in your land disposal, whether you're a farmer or a rancher, or your appropriation for water rights, even your use of the highway. You attach to yourself the thing that the government needs to regulate, and you think that that's okay. And so, th just as a reference, this, it seems so simple, this word operator. How, what harm can it do? It's all the difference in the world. That's attached to a facility as well. And the facilities underneath the, the, law, the statutes can be regulated. They're not talking to you. They're creating this, as I talked about two weeks ago, the straw party, the straw facility. They take your application that you thought you needed to fill out because you didn't understand what was going on, and they convert it right in front of your face, and you don't recognize the conversion. And I've pointed this out since 2005 to people. I've shown out, a, well, you filled out for this permit, and now look what they did when they hit it the Internet. The Internet shows you as a facility subject to their jurisdiction. As a man, when you filled out that application, are you now a, are you a facility, really? And they said, well, no. I said, well, there's your straw party that they have jurisdiction over that they've now converted you into. You're dealing through that. And so this is the same condition. They make you something that you're not because you didn't know to stay away. And typically it requires these applications. The applique, you stick it to yourself. It's all the self-inflicted wound. And so when I talk with someone who has misunderstandings about this, uh, these simple little things, actually. And I can point out more detailed, uh, and it, we went on further with this. So there's a couple of other conversational terms I can show that are within the context of mining uh, documentation that they want you to fill out. How you change your status and then how you become subject through that when, in fact, what you should have done has been true to the language of your grant, true to the language of the power of your expo exclusive possession, even to the, every landholder where you uh, have a patent uh, already there for the evidence of that that you give up your rights. You are diminished. You are not a status that you're not until you agree. Or you're there's these presumptions in law are killers. You have to go after them. But it's not that hard. Lots of people go on too far. Uh, what uh, I've said before is simply stay with the grant language. If you're only a grantee, don't take on any more color. Don't let them put more onto you. You're not an operator. You're not a contractor. You're not, you're not any of these. You're not a, you're not a laborer. You're not a labor underneath the uh, Title 29 of the Federal Code. You're none of these things. You're simply, again, this operator was, occupant, occupancy is another one. Because what they did on that for a minor and anybody who else has a, has a, a land disposed to them, they have an occupation on that land. It's not occupancy, but the regulation talks to occupancy like you have a house and you're living there. Well, your occupation is actually your 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 possession and control of that land. And so you li you miss these little words. You don't listen to what I'm saying. And you attach everything in your mind onto what's onto these things I'm talking about. You have diminished your ability to understand. Not a judgment. It's a fact. There's no way you can go away from that. And so it takes a little, for, so for like yesterday's conversation with a, uh, with a friend of mine, and trying to get, uh, let him see more because he had a you know, perplexing look on his face and had questions, it took a little bit to explain some of these examples. And once I started to sh straighten out the misunderstandings, the attachments of the, un the, the, the failed understanding onto what I was saying, it starts to become uh, more clear. I have to say more clear because I don't know, you know how far we go with this. Uh, you, you only see as far, I only see as far as I know. So I, don't, I can only see more clearly. I hope, at, at some point, more clearly is way sufficient to defeat anybody who comes to attack you. And, and so we don't, we make sure, I'm asking you here, when you listen behind the woodshed, and I really suspect uh, in the future, if my, pro if my broadcasts are ever uh, available, all those that have been doing research in the last uh, eight, ten years, uh, will maybe come to the terms with the fact of they learned themselves into a little box, and they never really turned around and applied the things, and then they'll recognize, once they free themselves of their own prejudice, and they look at what I was saying, what I've been saying, uh, more clearly, without that uh, shade, Without that tint or taint, uh, I think you're going to realize what I'm uh, I'm talking about better. And I, and so I just continue. I don't know what to expect from people anymore. 
a part of me is really disappointed, but I see more and more people getting it. They finally break through, uh, and uh, they take their own way. It's not even I have to direct the way. That's why I say find your own path, find your own wrong you need to make right, and then work with that. That'll give you lots of what you need to do. I repeat this over and over and over. For the few that do keep coming back and listening, you hear it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't know if you appreciate what I'm trying to tell you to try and focus you down. It's really in any aspect of life, it seems to me, that I look at all this, on how to deal with things in your life and deal with them pretty quickly and effectively. And I can tell you that because it's a, the, because we're living in this um, fabricated reality, it's really not a reality. There is no spoon, folks. Everything they tell you is sitting there as an illusion for you to accept. You don't have to accept any of it. And you sit in your, in your, in your innocence, if I can say it that way. Uh, you can now be free to look around and say, okay, well, if I'm, if I'm free, I'm innocent, and I'm free, and I'm free from being imposed, because that's what you see in the Constitution. The freedom of association is the freedom from being imposed with an association. I can kick back a bit, in my, at least contemplatively, and I can say, if that really isn't attaching me, then that person doing the attachment is committing a, really a crime against me. And then I, if I go from there, and then I just have to go showing it because the presumption is an authority is the authority. Why? Only simply because they have the violent power to, draw, to force that upon you. Uh, you better understand you're in a different place. And it's not about what works and what don't work as a systemic thing. Like people say, well, you can't go to the courts, or what I talk about is not, it, it makes no sense, or because you go into the court for the answer. You're not listening to me. In fact, I've, we've talked about this last night. We're in a serious trouble, folks. I don't know how anybody can expect in a system that didn't intend justice or it changed so where there's no justice, why you would go and think I would be going anywhere to insist that justice would be done. And then saying, well, because you don't have that option, that you're frivolous in saying that you need to go there. No, you got to confront the enemy. Uh, I don't know of anybody that can win a battle without confronting the enemy. And I mean confronting, there's proper ways to do it. What, Aikido, you can engage the enemy and use his own energy against him. That's kind of what I'm talking about, almost all the time. You find out those weaknesses that they have. I told you about the habitual beast. The government, the people in the government are habitual beasts, and they're, they're constrained by that code they show. They're black and white, they tell you, that uh, that's there to, they call it law. It's a constraint to them, and it's, and they have to work habitually with it. When you find out the weak, the Achilles heel, the tons, I mean, it's a, it's a centipede. It's a millipede. Uh, the government's a giant millipede. There's all these legs underneath this thing. And they got all those Achilles heels you can trip up. When you find those, that's where you attack. And you use that weakness against them. You're not really attacking anything. You're just showing that they can't use that leg no more. And it may take taking out a couple legs before that thing falls down. I don't know. But one or two guys, a handful of guys I work with, we're certainly going to not make much progress for people to prove to people what's going on. No, we have to go much more subtly. In fact, it's much better. As I told the gentleman last night, we can't promote because we also can't give the enemy our our, our plan of attack. We can't show how much we're doing. That's what they'll turn a, they'll turn their effort in that area and they'll defeat us. Right now, the surprise attack, it's the ongoing attack they don't even know is going on. It's this insidiousness that we put back on, hitting all the Achilles heels we can find. And we base it on the creatures and this beast, uh, this beast, the weaknesses, these habits. I mean, listen, my, my, my email, markonthebeast at yahoo.com. How many, how many years have I had that? We find the, we, we, we put the lashings to the beast where we can. The beast is just this thing that people think called government that they sit inside and use as a, as a criminal, uh, the a criminal co cover, uh, uh, the co color of authority that covers their, their criminality. How can anybody think, we're, I'd be suggesting you go in there and expect justice. No, we're going there to out it. And then, is most recently, within this last year, I've now come to the awareness of how to use these tools uh, to use law, uh, the law we expected to work. In other words, that law that was supposed to keep the peace, the one that's not being kept, and we see nothing but chaos around us and no justice at all. We insist upon it. And there's things that work, like the presumptions in law, that work automatic in law. Now, people will argue with me, but that's okay. You'll see one day. Well, hopefully you'll see. Hopefully you won't be one of those that dies not seeing. Hopefully eventually, your last day, your last gasp of breath, you'll say, oh, that's what he was talking about. And then you'll expire. And that'll be good enough for me, I suppose, although you wouldn't be very effective. 
that there's things that happen automatic in law once you once you flick all the levers. And the obligation is because everyone's innocent, you have to flick the levers. It's all this that part's pretty simple. So, if you don't flick the levers right, the you don't hit the combination, you don't hit the the fact, you don't have that magic decoder ring that gives you all the lever codes, the encryption in the system, you're not going to get out what you expected. And then uh, you're only going to get out what you're going to let yourself believe happened. And if you abandon the law, I'm telling you, makes matter of law conditions that happen, exposing those people in the government anywhere, even a, even your neighbor to be a criminal that they might be. If you don't let that automaticness work, it's not, it's not, if you don't let that automaticness work, you have defeated yourself right there because you're not allowing yourself a, a, an existence that will be automatic. And in a way, peace is automatic when everyone's being peaceful. And so this is an interesting, well, to my mind, an interesting way to keep the peace. In other words, there's no, there's, we're not beating anybody up, we're not beating anybody down, we're not uh, torturing them, nothing. We do these things that the society that we live in has agreed should be done in order to keep that peace. And the mining law is a pretty interesting so originating source because the mining law was created in order to keep the peace amongst miners who would kill themselves for that shiny gold stuff. And so put everything, start putting in context, there's a natural, more natural sense that comes out. It's the natural sense that we weren't so cool with each other, and we, were, but we are, we have a better n nature in us that we can work toward, and we can do things for ourselves. And that's what I try to bring here. We, we can work toward the better day that's been stolen from us. But we have to work for that better day. If we don't, that theft continues and it gets worse. There's nobody that's going to be coming in, the, in your life that's going to steal something from you that's ever going to care about you. Uh, to st what's going to change them to, to care about you more than whatever drives them? And obviously it wasn't the good things in life, unless it's a corruption of that, like the greed factor, power factor. All these things, we're told, is there to corrupt us. And I tell you, those things are used to corrupt people. And they're used as a tool against you. And they use it as a tool against everything that you do. And one of the tools that you do to yourself is you think you know something. And then you'd think you know it, but you don't put it in practice. I've said over and over. How many years now? Knowledge is not power. You can have all the knowledge in the world. You can sit on a rock with all that knowledge. You can contemplate your navel on a rock on a high mountain with all that knowledge. And what good are you? I can't even imagine. And so your knowledge does nothing. Knowledge and action, proper action, as I've actually had to adjust even my own original statement, knowledge and proper action becomes power. And then we're told in a societal sense, the mass of educated people have to be vigilant. And I look around and I see a mass of uneducated people that have been obstructed by various things to cause them to be less than they could be. And then they don't have the, you know, we they don't have the awareness to try and break out of that constraint and control. As I was going to say, I can move from right into that point on my, my tabs, and maybe I'll, I'll do that, but it'll, it'll kind of interrupt the first thing I want to talk about. What, what, what can they interrupt? How do they, how do they do that about interrupting us? They give us all this technology. They give us these chemicals that interfere uh, with our, our, our biology, how we do things, how, how this, this mortal coil actually functions or dysfunctions, the double-edged sword, which I say, grab, find the handle to the double-edged sword, then don't worry about it. But make sure you got the handle. And if you don't have the weapon, you're going to have to take a weapon and make sure you grab the handle. Why? Because we're, we've lost our prehensile tail as the, the monkeys that we is, and we have hands, and we have opposing thumbs, and that supposedly makes us much better. And that turns out to be a joke as well. Well, what what causes us? And then we find out here recently, news to me, news to probably everybody. And I don't know if it was news to you or not. I, news to me. I was, I'm pretty aware of. I've been pretty aware of stuff. Notwithstanding, I was uh, out of touch for many, many, many years, trying to go live in the mountains and forget about this nonsense I was watching. And then they came to find me. Couldn't be left alone. Okay, well, I guess that ain't gonna work. And the world's a round place. From the, notwithstanding uh, the flat earthers. Uh, the world's a round place, and we're, we've, filled, we've done filled it up pretty much. Power, killing power has done filled up the world. You're not going to escape that 
that exaction. And so there's a reality we have to break down to. And so what are we going to do? How are we going to work it? We're going to just pretend we know something. So we're so, so smart that we don't have to do anything uh, and let that thing happen to us and complain about it. I guess we all can do that. But that's not either the way that really works either. And we see that if anybody has a sense of, um, if I can call it liberty in their mind, uh, they're inspired by that very thing that I'm talking that they're not working toward. It's not a it's not a spectator event, even though they want you to be the peanut gallery. They want you in the peanut gallery to watch the breads and circuses, which controls you, conde- it condemns your mind, uh, it, it conditions your mind, it con- conditions your perception. And it's pretty amazing for me to see uh, things that I do in the world with other people doing in the world and we're doing good uh, are essentially dis- in the minimum just ignored by most people which is pretty telling on, on where we are as a society and where we are generally as all societies. And this is just telling of our failed our failed nature, the actual animal nature that comes up, we let come up. And they treat us as. They tell us in the, in the code. I've pointed this out over and over. They treat us as, as these animals. And we, we, and we accept it. And we'll complain and grumble about it, but we're still the prisoner in that. And we don't take to task these criminals that come against us, and at least in my mind, and how to at least in this moment make a record of that in the proper way. And I say that again with some authority to, to in the last, yesterday's discussion uh, with a, uh, a minor and a friend. I've known we've known each other for quite a long time, and uh, in listening to what I say, they don't quite get it, but I was able to explain a little bit more uh, that we we do it wrong. We 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 don't approach the problems correctly. And we bring upon us these things. And I gave him many, numerous examples of that that he knew about. Can't tell you all because you're not all, you're not knowledgeable about some of the things uh, that go on in the mining community necessarily. Uh, that when I was explaining it to him, he he got a bit a much better insight of what really was going on, and uh, he knew from the fact of uh, other evidence that we had attempted to. In, to uh, give information to uh, have the people avoid the harm that came on them, and they refused it. And this is the point about what I say: you can reject me, but it may not. It may you may think you're looking good in rejecting me, but it, the harm may come upon you, or you will think you've avoided it and didn't do anything, but you'll be ineffectual, and you'll think that that you're now somehow superior. And I see this a little differently, and so I I, I don't I don't see that that to be to be the, the right thing. Uh, you know, I, I made some pretty direct statements last week about the Bundy problem and their lawsuit were very fundamental law, very fundamental problems, no response, no corrections. I'm going to continue. I went back, I reviewed this stuff in my mind, and I had some misgivings because I didn't have all the information. Uh, the only thing I could know is I think they filed in state court, but there's no, that didn't change anything, actually. Just the change, this is the laws you're going to use, but when you see this whole thing is just a, the state is a fractal of the federal anymore. Uh, they adopt all the same stuff. Uh, you realize that, well, except for some idi- some small parts and pieces, they all pretty much operate the same. That makes it easier for us. But we have to we have to do those things. We have to make those records. We can't walk in and ask the wrong question. I've told you they're going to give you those controllers, the ones that sit there that you deny, are going to give you the right answer. In fact, Bundy is the I would say the poster child of that in my mind, and I say that with some authority in that he was told back in 2014 or so, 2015, uh, you, you need to go a different path. Don't not go on the path, but, but don't go where they're telling you to go. That's the trap. That's not the narrow path of your property. And this is another pe- thing that people misunderstand. Uh, the protection is on the government issuances. In other words, a patent is what's protected, and you happen to have your right to it. It's not you. You have to put a bright perspective on all this. What, what can they do to mess us around? What can they do to mess up nature? Look around. They're telling us how they do it. And I keep telling you, and you're going to be, and I, you're, you are, is, a, you know, the general. Some of you know better. And, 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 and even now, I'm talking to you, and I'm going to tell you that even though I don't have a cell phone, I'm, uh, I have high frequency uh, electronics beaming on me right now to talk to you. So I, I I should don't I get some brownie points for sacrifice, folks? 
Oh, speaking of sacrifice, and, and maybe lovingly so, I, I understand now, uh, who was it, uh, Puxitani Phil, he saw his shadow or something, and he remembered to tell people to donate to RLM. Uh, this is, the, I guess, the time of the year. I didn't realize it was uh, relevant to Groundhog Phil. Uh, but Grimner has the bills. It's about four or so hundred dollars a year to keep uh, the RLM going, to keep this voice out there, and all the other things, the services that come in that you need to buy to do broadcasts and all that kind of neat stuff. Uh, so if you could, uh, those that can, please find the donate buttons or the or the crypto coins or whatever you, you have to to uh, to uh, help support the f- facility, the infrastructure, the mat- the uh, the hardware that that gets this out to people. Call or contact our Real Liberty Media on their donate page, and there's all kinds of ways to do it. Uh, and, and please do so. Uh, this is the time of year I, uh, I was just told we were in the midst of it. Uh, that was kind of a funny thing. We were already we already been doing something I hadn't known, and we're already in the middle of that thing. So, uh, but uh, here we are. I, I hope I didn't get too late to get the uh, information out to y'all. As I think about it, and uh, I think we're told like, we can use uh, Puxitani Phil, whether he sees his shadow or not, he knows that's the time to donate to RLM, Real Liberty Media. And thank you, Grimner, for everything you do and keep it going, and uh, gives me a place to come and. Make a mess out of stuff, I guess, uh, as we as we try to go through here. But uh, and all and then we get to take all this and put it on other places like Minds.com and BitChute for as little uh, uh, response I get there, and um, uh, YouTube for as long as we'll be able to be there and uh, and, and things. Uh, all that's there for the people to hear. So today we started out and I want to just recap and move on to how they mess us around how we aren't thinking clearly and how they make it easy for us not to think clearly, but that's not an excuse. Uh, when you're listening to what I'm saying, you cannot throw your prejudice of what you thought you know on what I'm saying. You would literally have to make a separate category, and you have to approach it the way I'm talking about it. You can't filter my information through your thoughts. There's just no way, there's just no way to do it. Uh, if you think you have a problem with what I'm saying, really we have to talk about uh, where I have, can identify maybe where the misunderstanding is. And I don't put it any more than that. There's no judgment on on that. It's we have a. I find language. I find it, chatting is the worst a tra- way to communicate. Emails is about about as worst. Uh, even talking to somebody, it's very difficult to communicate. Language is not such an easy tool. Uh, and so I don't know what to say. Uh, for those of you, don't do yourself a disservice to to pick a fight with anything I'm saying. I'm gonna. Pr- if we had the ability to sit down and talk in the time. I would probably find a couple of things. You may not want to give up on that, but uh, on what you thought you knew. But I, I could, I could at least identify how what you thought you knew really wasn't, and uh, what you were doing. Essentially, you've got the millstone on your neck, and and I've uh, kind of gotten free of a lot of that. There's still a few, but but I, if I know them there. You know, I know I'm working on how you get the answer to all those things, uh, but there's very few. Uh, I'm I'm learning to take some of these pres- these things that were told. To heart, uh, you know, it's not that I understood so much. Like, what's a what was a self-evident truth? I really didn't have a clue. Uh, but up until the last few years ago, I really didn't un- really truly understand it. Then, then it, I was somehow it came to me. The the inspiration came to understand what a self-evident truth is, and I started to write paper that actually exposed that. And that's not and so. The point was, there's no argument. It's self-evident when you establish, you frame. A, dis, a position, a, an argument. If, it, if somebody has an argument, you frame the definitive condition correctly. It's not an argument. It's self-evident. This is even in the fiction. In fact, you're outing the fiction. You're outing all these tools they use against us that we complain about, that we take on, that we think that they exist, and they lead, they precede us. Like this bad shadow that follows us. And, and it's not. It's it's all what you've said. It's all what you've allowed someone to defame you with it's, that conditions your existence. And that's been the problem, part of it. But and so, what do they do? How do we? How do we? Um, I mean, where where's the evidence that we can be conditioned and we can be wrong, even though we think we're right? It is in all these studies they talk to us about. Uh, in this case, the cell phone radiation. I'm sitting right next to a, pretty close to a router. I've got the same frequency coming out. What am I going to do with that? I don't know. I mean, I've only got so much I can do. I've got only so much space. I've got to kind of give one up for the team, I suppose. Now, I do other things to try and 
mitigate these problems, but here's a, a for those of you that will listen, a cell phone radiation linked to tumors in male rats, government study says. Now, government, we don't know what they're doing. The point is there's information here, uh, and it's confirming what we already knew. It's not the point. The point is you're building, you need, I use this stuff, as I tell you, to, this is your bag of evidence, these things. When a, someone comes after you with some supposed authorita, you bring this stuff up. Okay, and he, even if, let me just put it this way, even if this study was a lie, you bring it up, it now meets and refutes what their assertion is. Remember, you're innocent. They have the duty and the burden. Every petitioner or plaintiff has the burden. Anyone who asserts something has the burden of proof. It doesn't mean you don't listen to the proof. What it means is that if they're trying to come with an imposition, you can return them. Listen, I just don't, you're going to have to show that to me where I can agree. You don't have the power to impose upon me things and statuses and obligations that you just don't have the right to do. This is us communicating with ourselves, but we can be messed up. We can have things that happen to us. High exposure to radio frequency radiation, RFR, is emitted from your cell phone. It causes a rare cancer in male rats, according to a draft conclusion of the National Institute of Health on Friday. And if this is the one I thought it was, I think this... Uh, draft, and here we go for the administrative part of this. It's the stuff that works into the future. It's a draft that's been put into a comment period, if I remember this this correctly. Uh, but uh, So there's an, uh, for those of you that are interested, let's say like a, people like Jerry Day, uh, or those that uh, follow his work, and to, I mean, he's really exposing a lot of stuff, but here's his, and he's focusing on that. That's his wrong he wants to show, uh, explain, and make right. This kind of thing would be what he he and his people that are focused on those uh, ex, uh, those external smart meters would be jumping on this uh, to start making a rattle of the of the cage uh, regarding these high, high frequency radiations that the government now now cannot uh, avoid. Again, so I see the news as a notice, and here it is, the notice of the comment period, if I remember this one correctly. But uh, two technical reports, and there's a link, one on mice, another on rats. You mice and rats, you, uh, released by the NIH uh, to National Toxicology Program, which I found fascinating. Radio frequencies and toxicology show the exposure to high levels of radiation results in tumors and tissues surrounding nerves in the heart of male rats. Both male and female rats were exposed to high levels of RFR and showed increased patterns of damage to heart to their heart tissue according to research. So enough there. You can read more. I'm pointing out, here's now some tests. I say you can grab on with this for those of you interested, uh, or whether you're private health, or whether you want to start taking the wrong that's made right, and you start proving out these things. Here's something that's evidence to you that you can move on. And so, anyway, and this is, I know, without getting too far, uh, rare cancer in male rats, rare cancers pop up. We've been wondering about the tumors from phones. You know, there was a lot of information that said there wasn't. Here's the first study. And then you look out and find all these people with the special rare types of cancers. Uh, I know a friend who uh, has now just found out he's got one, uh, but it's not this one. So we don't know. There's not the no extension on where this might go. Um, and so uh, do you can what word word to the wise or word to the active, word to the evolutionary engaged, those of us behind the woodshed to put the put the, the lashings on, on the beast that continues to uh, give itself exceptions. Remember, Title 50, the government allows this stuff. It's, they take it, the, it's all based under this mutual risk ass, uh, insurance type of, uh, of, of analysis. You know, they're willing to lose a few of you if the most of you just keep making more. I mean, that's a bunch of lays, but a bunch of potato chips you, you, you are. Uh, so, uh, it, anyway, look. This was uh, interesting that it's a claim it came, comes from a government report. And they're showing this rare, rare cancer. It actually goes after your heart. Now, I wonder if that's partly because you wear your, your phone in your pocket. And it's pulsing out this high-frequency bursts, which may be the worst, uh, the worst of the worst of that type. So, at any rate, word to the wise, it's out there. Food packaging chemical BPA found in digestive systems of 86% of the teenagers. Now, now, so we grow up, we're finding out more and more young people are having heart problems and cancers and, 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 and zit problems. And I don't mean the acne. I'm talking about they have identity, gender identity problems. Uh, they have all kinds of problems. They're dying young. In fact, I think I see uh, Media Monarchy, uh, James Pilatos, putting up 
he's not observing that a lot of music producers and music people are dying around 40. Why? Well, there's a report. Food packaging chemical BPA found in 86% of the teenagers. A potentially hazardous chemical used in certain plastic food packaging has been found in the digestive system of 86% of the teenagers who took part in this recent study. If you start listening to this stuff and you start applying it to uh, all these other health problems uh, that they kind of attribute to other things, you may actually see that what they're doing to you is inside your food system. It's in your system and by the food system. We'll go through more. See, some studies have suggested the chemical could be linked to breast cancer and heart disease, and there have been uh, calls for it to be banned. Now, I, I looked at that, and when I f heard read the cell phone study where the rats had had uh, heart disease, I was wondering, well, do the, is their food and feed contaminated by BPA in such a way that their shorter lives were actually evidencing a BPA poisoning and not cell phones? No, I don't want to diminish the threat of the of the frequency uh, upon your cells. Uh, but w here's the problem about science. How do you, you know, you got to set your tests up. Your scientific studies have to be well planned and done, and they need to address these things. But here, chemical plastics uh, in your in your food, and they because of the processing of the packaging. Actually, the packaging is what it comes to BPA, which has been used since 1960s. So that's uh, taking up probably three quarters of my li uh, the listeners here, uh, if not more, is often found in white lining inside tinned food to drink. Uh, drink cans and bottle tops, even till receipts, DVDs, and processed foods are known to contain it. And uh, so this also off gases. I won't go any more. Uh, you can read the study. Uh, there's a potential reason for why we are affected. Uh, if your heart has problems, you're not going to get the blood flow. You're not going to think correct. You think you're thinking correct, but you're not. And don't ever forget this uh, study that we did. Remember the ant colony study uh, report I read? Uh, such a profound study. They're talking about you, the epigenetic change because of the environment that, that, they, that you're living in, the, the real-time genetic changes going on. Subtle as they might be, they're still being going on. And I, in a way, I think that's the adaption process, too. But this is not in good ways. Now, remember, and don't forget about the binary weapon provision uh, of this thing, which brings on this other idea here that came on. So here you got your food, your plastics. Uh, they tell you they're trying to do cancer, uh, treat cancer while they're causing it. But here comes an interesting story, and uh, I found this interesting on a couple of levels, like the binary weapon, but re but turned around to actually and possibly I can't I don't know more than to read the story, possibly actually start to work better in how you fight these things that, that the society uh, helps give you, uh, and you because you keep not paying attention to the smaller details, and maybe uh, honestly so because we just. We just want to give it over to the experts. They're all looking out for us, too. And so we don't pay too close of attention. But right, remember, now we have the press cancer with cancer, special cancers being uh, being created. But here's a cancer vaccine, and it's in quotes. So when you read the story, you realize it's not truly the vaccine they're talking. Uh, however, it does uh, part of the process. It's like a binary weapon against a cancer tumor. A pretty interesting technology. Some It says cancer vaccine eliminates tumors in mice. Uh, so, those of you that ain't the rats, uh, we don't know. But the mice, you might have something here. And they did show a chart. Maybe you have to get the link. I It works a little bit different. It respond, uh, uh, The so-called human animal responds a little bit different, apparently, than this mice study. But pretty important, impressive uh, results here. Really more, uh, in a way, more logical to the attack. Remember, chemotherapy kills your whole system in order to try. If you, if you can survive the chemotherapy, you hope that it you survive just a, just that one day longer than the than the cancer does, and that's how that theory works. This doesn't work on that process. Some immunotherapy approaches rely on stimulating the immune system throughout the body. Others target naturally occurring checkpoints that limit the uh, the anti cancer activity of immune cells. Still, others like CAR T cell therapy, recently approved to treat some types of leukemia and lymphomas, require patients' immune cells to be removed from the body and genetically engineered to attack the tumors. Many of these approaches have been successful, but they ha each have downsides, from difficult to handle side effects to high cost and lengthy preparation or treatment times. Quote, all these immunotherapy advances are changing medical practice, Levi said. Our approach uses the one-time application of very small amounts of two agents to stimulate the immune cells only within a tumor itself 
In the mice, we saw amazing body-wide effects, including the elimination of tumors all over the animal. Cancers often exist in strange kind of limbo with regard to immune system. Immune cells like T cells recognize the abnormal proteins often present a uh, often present on cancer cells and infiltrate to attack the tumor. However, as the tumor grows, it often devises ways to suppress the activity of the T cell. So what this does, and it gets now into the, the, the uh, scientific lingo. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to go through it, and my tongue doesn't feel too untied this morning to pull this off. It's not that bad. Uh, but they have a two-part thing that they do. Uh, and one, and it goes right into the tumor. And what's interesting is these T cells apparently get a flavor for the particular tumor they're injected in. And when the second part of the in, uh, of the material, the second part goes in, it's an OX40 compound. It activates the T cells, and they go out and look for. They destroy the cell they're in, and they go out for all the other cells that are cancer cells that are like it. Really interesting, very fascinating, really targeted. It's ex apparently very inexpensive. It's kind of the known, it's already known to be available but not used. Uh, so they are coming on to something that's very, very interesting. But it's a targeted approach. So something maybe those of you that may are de dealing with cancer or coming on to it or understand it or know somebody, uh, maybe this is something you can go look at. Maybe this is something you you can figure out uh, to to consider. Uh, in my mind, I also always look first. Okay, if this is what's going on, then how do we fortify the body to be doing that ahead of time? Now, cancer is really funny. It's not funny. It's serious. It, 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 it's nature. It's figured out how, like I said earlier, it's figured out how to protect itself from the from the natural scavengers of of the malignant or any uh, adulterated cell. This eliminates that barrier. And so that's that's the hard part around uh, stopping these things. Or, as we said, like flus and things like that, hygiene, hygiene, well, make your body hygienic to counter. And there's lots of therapies to try and do with that. I'm not going to tell anybody uh, what they want to do. Lots of things won't work either. It all It's all body specific, body, case by case basis. All I want to point out here is that we hear that cancer can be caused by certain things, the BPA, the cell phones. Uh, now they're coming on to a much more targeted approach uh, that actually may be something that we can look at and give us a little bit more time. If you're not healthy, you got nothing. You're not. You're going to be focused on your illness. It's just, just that's the way that works. You get the flu, you're not going far. You'd be ho you're just hoping to take your next breath. And the, the one that's going around the country now, it, it, you're wondering about if you're going to get your next breath. I understand. It's really not the flu, is it? It's this other thing that they found out. There's just other things that are out there that the flu vaccines won't address anyway. Well, they call this a vaccine. This is actually a two-part bioweapon against against a tumor, it seems. And they put the vaccine in quotes. It's really not a vaccine that way. So they, I don't like the promotion there because this is, a different, I think, a different approach. I suppose it could fit underneath the vaccine, but don't get lost in that part. Be careful that they didn't use this to hide it. You need to look at what this can do. Watch how they do it. Maybe go track it down for yourself or for those that you know might need it. But this may be a pretty quick way to eliminate certain things. And they say this is one type of cancer or a set of cancers that they did. They think it can be expanded to every cancer. And that just tells me that the T cells then get a, a taste for the blood of the tumor they've been after. And then they go scavenge. The, they're, they're given the, they're given the, the uh, knowledge uh, somehow. They're given the knowledge, maybe through the RNA. Uh, to go find the other tumor cells because now they have the eyes to see the enemy that was transparent to them. How'd you like that? I pulled that back in for what I say, don't I? That was cool. Thank you very much. Seriously, this is how this works. You see nature responding the way I've been saying that you need to start responding in this societal organism that we have cancers have grown up inside our own our own systems. And uh, again, you you can be a you can you can be a, a T cell that don't have the eyes to see think you have oh well, I've got a mission but not see the not see the tumor that you're you're floating right by because you really don't have it's transparent to you and someone has to come in maybe behind the woodshed and inject you into that tumor so then you finally get to see it and that's part of the problem you know it's a, a sensitive thing to do it's like tough love isn't it so 
uh, anyway, so here you get your cancers by some different ways. They have a targeting system now that's going on uh, that seems to be a simpler, uh, more certainly more cost-effective method uh, to go after a very serious issue. And that moves me into the what I was going to start with, another really simple where science starts to really look at something instead of just making consensus, but actually does studies and looks at the parts of the failures or the, the things that don't go on and looks, don't, don't dis, not throwing all this stuff out, but looking at every aspect. This is a very interesting story about the bees. You know, bees are a serious uh, problem. If we've talked about it behind the woodshed. Uh, they have continuing problems for various reasons. I'm not going to talk about that. I'd rather talk here about how, in one regard, where it's still, regardless of all other things, bee mites are a serious threat, and they have a very particular problem about trying to solve how to get rid of them. They're really resistant critter. Uh, nature is tough, folks. I don't know what to tell you. And it will adapt. It'll, if you want to know about evolution, but adaption, that's where it is. I mean, that's what nature does. It doesn't evolve. It just adapts. It is what it is, and it adapts. And so we, sweet salvation. Can a new discovery help conserve the bees? And this is pretty interesting what they found out. It ends up and turns down to be a really simple thing. But it wasn't what they tested for. It happened to be something that was within the testing framework as a coexistent compound. It, like it, it was transparent to the, to the test. But scientific studies are designed to test hypotheses. Such as the, have you ever heard about a scientific study to test the, test the hypothesis of a statistical relation to, relationship to an unproven hypothesis called high climate change, folks? No, you don't hear none of that. But here's the, telling you, the scientific studies are designed to test hypotheses, uh, such as that of, of as a new, new treatment will be more effective than a corresponding control. However, researchers should conduct their analysis with an eye to the possibility that there is something behind apparent positive results besides the variables they are they are to focus on. And this is, again, the thing that's transparent. You have to look through your own actions. Your own intention may not be enough. Uh, this is an interesting thing for me to read. I like to see this stuff. It just gives us all more insight. We, we don't know who we're going to be to be the one that looks through and sees the next thing that was missed by most everybody. But the, luckily, a team of scientists in the news as of late were vigilant enough to spot that they were in just a situa such a situation. The ramifications are that, they may, uh, they, they, that there may be a new treatment for honeybees that are affected by infestations of parasitic mites which is thought to be a major factor in the global decline in bee populations. I'm not going to go through what that might try to be covering. Let's go back on and find out what science can do if it's open to the possibilities and doesn't foreclose and prejudice itself from what it thought it saw, it thought it knew, as a positive that ain't so. It was really fascinating to me. It comes to everything we do. We've got to be very cautious about this. As I entered into telling you, be careful about throwing out um, what I'm telling you, uh, because it doesn't fit. You, you gotta, you're gonna have to look through that your own uh, focus to see pop, more likely what I'm saying. The present, but for, to this story and saving bees, the presence of these pollinators is an important issue in the ecological and economical uh, basis of upon which humans survive and thrive. Therefore, developing measures to protect bees should be in a vital concern for all of us. Okay, there's your political statement uh, getting into one world order. But moving on. Uh, goes on and talks about the RNA basis for what the spider mites are, how they're so difficult. And they come down and they did a test on a, on a, on a substance that would uh, control the bees. And they did a control, they had a con as you would have a control. They realized that though it looked like the, the, the substance of control was causing an effect, in applying the RNA, which they thought was the control agent in the bee, in the mite, excuse me, they realized that the both control and the test subject used the same solvent, essentially, that derived the RNA component that they used as the targeting weapon. Someone observed that this solution was, in fact, could have been masking a positive result that the material itself wasn't doing that this other thing that was included in both sides, there was actually no test for, there was no uh, test group 
because it was a common agent between both uh, both subjects that this little this compound uh, needed to be checked and they checked the compound irrespective of the RNA that they had developed but using it and they found out the team prepared it I'll just read it now they prepared a treatment consisting of sucrose solution containing either the DS RNA that could in, in, inactivate several important V destructor genes or the DS RNA that codes for for green fluorescent protein as the generic control group that they had, uh, i.e. as the gene that does not occur in the B mite, so they can check for it. They found that their, in, their active treatment uh, could eradicate mites effectively in one group of bees in three days, whereas the mortality of mites in other uh, and similar group left untreated was less than 5%. However, the researchers also found that the bees exposed to the G GFP solution the control group exhibited a loss of mites described as identical to that in the active treatment group. Therefore, it was reasonable to assume that the effect of the mites was not associated with the RNAi strategy hypothesis they had set up. But what they turn out is they find out that the material they use is lithium chloride. Uh, this is uh, this is what they use to, to create the concentrations uh, in the preparation of the dsRNA compound. To, to affect the strategy they thought, they, they found out that that lithium chloride was actually the, the agent. When you took away the RNA, uh, you worked with this lithium chloride, it destroyed the parasitic mites. So this chemical can be used, and again, more treat, more studies going to be done on it now, but directly, the targeted attack now with a very particular thing that apparently doesn't hurt the, hurt the uh, bee at all, uh, but kills the mites is on the table and it's really inexpensive apparently uh, the way they take compared to trying to go on and on and on where you're not really controlling the problem anyway. You can read the story more often. I just want to point out there's ways to look at the world. You got to you got to be really open uh, to information uh, in your study, your, in your scientific study of your own thing or uh, the, the things around you in your environment. You have to be aware that there's false positives or false proofs. And you need to be studying for that. And this was an interesting uh, uh, example of that and something I think is pretty cool. I, I mean, bees are cool stuff. We're going to need those bees, there's no doubt. And for the mite problem, given that's the any hive's problem, they may have just discovered something a lot easier to uh, more effectively get rid of those mites. And that's going to be cool, see, because if that's the case, and there is mites, and you get rid of the mites, We'll then be able to look through the mites and see, is there any continuing problem like high frequency interaction with, uh, with uh, small, um, small dimensional mem um, uh, parts and pieces of, of, of insects and your brains and your cells, like we see cancer being caused, the, the miswiring of something, the misgrowth um, growing of something in a body. And, and so here, this is interesting if the uh, issue is that they've been putting the wrong medicine on. Uh, that's been covering another problem. It would be interesting to see that cleared away, and we might be able to get more at what might be the a problem in those areas that aren't mite, uh, mite, uh, are, are, aren't hives that are conditioned by mites. Um, so with all these uh, things that the government, you, you see nature, uh, simple things can be res resorted to. Uh, well, good understanding and then can bring simple uh, resolutions. Uh, when you're open to them and you uh, are seeking them out and uh, and or you can be a, a lawmaker a politician uh, and not look at all this stuff that's coming down and, and and then think that you're helping everybody under your agenda uh, your your political plunder and do things like what's happening in Florida where the lawmakers introduced the HPV vaccine mandate bill so this is starting to sweep the country um, it doesn't matter that people get harmed. This is a, a this is a risk, uh, an assigned risk thing. They don't care that some people get hurt. In fact, those that get hurt, they they benefit the pharma, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical company. So this is all the bottom line. I tell you, it's all about the bottom line. This is one of those things, uh, and they come underneath this. So they're protecting everybody. Uh, it makes no sense at all. But those of you in Florida, you really need to pay attention. Uh, the uh, Florida lawmakers are now pushing a totalitarian medical police state law that uh, would uh, deny a public education to children who aren't injected with the uh, extremely toxic and risky HPV vaccine. Um, man, I can't even tell you about, this is just so 
what can I say? It's just so wrong. I mean, okay, so now what? Those of you in Florida have something to step up to. SB1551, uh, also being deceptively called the Women's Cancer Prevention Act, mandates HPV vaccines in school-age children, revoking medical choice rights from parents and invoking state-sponsored coercion uh, to force child uh, children to be subjected to extremely risky medical interventions against the wishes of their parents. Well, as you've heard me say, that that's a that paragraph for all of its intent to scare uh, to invoke you into some uh, thing it uses all the wrong words it doesn't take the right position uh, and, and so we can I can take it with a grain of salt uh, but if they're doing coercion uh, that's a felony and uh, I keep telling you it's it doesn't they don't abandon the, the law of that if you can show what I've told you are the elements uh, for what is it uh, felony coer felony extortion and coercion uh, if if you claim your offspring as your property, and they're not the state's child, you now have a property right that ha that this coercion also becomes a, a a secondary felony. It's all a matter how you frame what's going on, and then you have the evidence, as we've found over and over, that this stuff is just not not the proper thing. It's all based on uh, somebody's hopes and feelings about something on an agenda more than actually they use the cover of public health and welfare, that's another felony because it's not actually, it's a pretext. It's not the truth. And so once you all listen to what I'm saying, and you start, and you focus on this, you don't have to know the world, you just focus on this one thing. You can, like, take this paragraph apart. You can see how, how the one that's in, that's trying to describe it to you is, is incorrect. You see what they're doing. You know that's wrong. You can take apart this sentence and get the parts and pieces to start on how to actually work to defeat it, how actually to educate uh, people to understand how to defeat it. Uh, until until we start getting to that point, I guess that's the more of the critical thought that we're not, we're, we talk about we do, oh, we're critical thinking, but we're not. You know, I, I hear lots of stuff, oh, we got all these things that make us exalted because we, uh, we do it, uh, and I don't want to go through the whole list of people that do lots of things they're not doing it at all it's just a it's just a thing you claim that you do to give yourself more more uh, apparent authority everything's an authority I'm now I'm now seeing and that's why I say it's up to you to settle down and do what's better um my my things are suggestions observations on how you can tear stuff apart i don't know how that's going to be something you could fight with it's just whether or not you want it that's the thing the subject matter of your of your um, ire if i can call it ire uh, on the thing that's wrong you need to make right what I'm saying can't be uh, is not uh, about this and how to tear it down and how to make it work, how to how to address that problem is not under debate. It's not even a question. There's a misunderstanding in the description of this paragraph right here. They do identify the act, but we are coming at it with a misapprehension that they can even do that. They use the words, the coercion's right there. I expended it over to extortion, but you have to understand to do something else, and that's to remove your child from the state's understanding and presumption. That takes another few steps. So I say, what I tell you is a nugget. It, it's, it's, a, it's just a nugget of how you, uh, it's a thumbnail on how it's going to be uh, developed. And so you can say, complain that there's no nothing to do about this or not to do it, or what right, what good is it? I'm saying set the record so you can do something about it. Doing nothing and complaining is not setting the record to do about it. Understand what a parent is. How'd you get there? How is that the presumption? If it's risky medical uh, in interventions, do you have the proof? Don't don't whine up. Go get the proof. Do something for yourself. As I was talking to a, my friend yesterday, a minor friend, it's more like if you look at this world as an ongoing uh, court case, and everything you do requires evidence, and that, by the rule of evidence, requires something in writing, not just what you talk about, but something in writing, or something that can be reduced and is reduced to writing. That's how you walk through this world right now, with how screwball it's gotten. Now you're proceeding in a better understanding, and probably nine times out of ten, if not higher, you're going to be able to address anybody who thinks that they have that you know the one percent, uh, nine tenths of the law of possession, and all this other nonsense. You can d t just take that right out right off the bat. You, you kick their legs out before because you've got the evidence, not your opinion, not your thoughts. 
not your questions, not your whining. I, I, again, so here we I, Ron Paragraph gets me fired up. Say, wow, all well, the it's the you see the proof of the problem. There's a misunderstanding. There's all the evidence to say if they got this coercion and they got the medical risk intervention, they have the proof to address the stupidity coming out of the politicians. And I, I hear crickets on this stuff. I don't get it. I hear people fighting with me instead of figuring out, well, don't tell me what, about your fight with me. Tell me what the wrong is that you're working on to make right. That's what I want to start to hear about. You know, are you having trouble? Maybe I can help. Maybe I can't, but maybe I can. But until you have a wrong you're making right, I'm getting to the point, I don't know, you're wasting time. You're wasting your own breath. Stop whining. What are you in the chats for? What are you even doing anything about? Why do you study? You study to think, to show that you think you know so much more than everybody else? That's not going to do anything. It doesn't do anything. Sitting there contemplating your navel about all the no things you know does nothing. What are you doing with what you know? Well, I, okay, I could read on about this vaccine you, on and on. If you're into it, you know how bad this thing is. The, 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 poly, the, poly, the, the politics in Florida are going to make it mandatory. They then throw that up against your not being able to have your kids schooled. I'm saying good. Don't get the vaccine and don't have your 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 kids pub your your kids your little goats uh, public schooled. Do it at home, however hard that is. Now the problem with that it's like California. They're going to attack you for that. If I understand, I don't even know if I have that that story on the tabs here. Uh, they're going to attack you, and I think it's in California. Or they're going to call you a child abuser for educating your own offspring at home. Now. That alone has a, is just that statement alone. If you start to de delve into the fact of what they're imposing, exposes a whole lot of crime on the government side. Oh, we'll talk about oh, that's the wrong. So Fourth Amendment right, Fourth Amendment this, that, the other, and the other thing. And they won't create. They'll create a question and a whining and a gnashing of teeth. They won't set the record up on how that's actually the fact and move through a remedy to show that the parties or uh, the officials are in criminal uh, conduct. Nobody does this. I don't, I don't think I'm the only one that does this. And I say that, and we're going to go, oh, no, we, I've seen law. Well, we sue this and that. No, you all do it through the law side. <laughs> it's the same problem of going to a court on a motion and asking are you a judge, are you, are you, are you a criminal? <laughs> yeah, you picked the wrong tool. You, you picked the wrong, the wrong function in, in the uh, assertion of what's going on. This is what I see. I see lots of missteps. Not that they can't be changed. And that's the whole. That's the inspiration. If you're already, if you're to the point when you are doing something and taking missteps, that's almost. A, I, I smile because that means you're just that close. You're that close to getting uh, what you need. What, what you need to help other people too. Again, you, the example for yourself, will be a shining light to others. Given they want, they have the eyes to see or want to see. Not that they condition you. And what did I say before about the government setting it up for pharma, the HPV stuff? Oh, wow, big money to the pharma that makes it. Uh, pharma, uh, and then we hear this. And here should be good. Those of you should be looking at how, why do you trust your government when you hear this around the world? Well, because it's over, it does, it's over there. It's not going to happen here. Are you kidding me? Pharma company has licensed suspended as vaccine blame for sterilization of 500,000 women and children. A state sponsor, and when I say the country, don't you say, oh, well, that's over there. The United States has an exception under its all of its uh, Title 50, uh, the exception to hurting you in every aspect and every way, that it becomes a national security interest license for them to hurt you, should not go beyond, uh, go without your scrutiny when I read that it's not here in the United States, but in Africa. Don't do that to yourself. Understand the government of the United States has the capacity, and they'll justify it through this, to, to do the very same thing wherever they want to. And I don't think that this is not too far away from the United States doing it eh, through the U.N. Uh, anyway, State-sponsored forced sterilization on a mass scale has allegedly taken place in Africa, according to opposition leaders and the public who are rally, railing against the government. An industrial pharmaceutical laboratory has since uh, had its license suspended by Kenyan and credit accreditation system a service, excuse me, as a result of the controversy. Well, that doesn't sound like it's uh, just from opposition leaders. It sounds like that the state organization did that. Kenyan opposition leader Ray La Odinga 
who swore himself in as president, who swore himself in as president, <laughs> uh, claimed that at least 500,000 young girls and women may be infertile following a tetanus vaccine. Not the flu, the tetanus vaccine administered by the government in 2014 to 2015. It goes on to explain uh, how this was set up and what it did. Catholic doctors uh, found or uh, were originally uh, made the accusations claiming the vaccine uh, may contain a hormone uh, that is dangerous uh, to young women and that can cause potential uh, sterilization. There's more and more information as you go through this story. I don't want to just read on and on uh, that that did, in fact, start to happen. If they're allowing the... Uh, if they're allowing a hormone, uh, they could have called it an adju adjuvant, uh, some some uh, accelerant that helps this vaccine along, which is we're finding out really are the poisons, uh, then, then they're willing to do that anywhere, folks. And they're willing to hide it under a thoata and uh, author the, the, the professed authority to do so. And here's the source, when I mentioned the UN, the church position, uh, Catholic Church, remember all this is tied together. The Holy See sits as an advisor, uh, rep witness to the UN and all that. This is all together. The, the Church's position was informed by uh, what had happened in the Mexico, uh, Nicaragua, and Philippines, where the various governments together with the WHO, not the Rock Group, not the OWL, but the WHO, World Health Organization, and UNICEF, how many of us went around with little bitty cup, carb, uh, milk carton cups to go collect quarters for this organization? Boy, did they have us uh, duped. Uh, who and UNICEF had conducted similar campaigns using tetanus toxoid impregnated with beta human uh, cryonic uh, gonotropin, BHCG, that causes permanent infertility among girls and women? I'm going to end right there. Uh, these. Uh, this, the pharma brokers of the globe, the who, are willing to do all this, cause this question, and be found out and not be, be bashful about it. The United States government supports all this. The United States government in Title 50 have all the exceptions to do it to you. I've told you, you look in the Middle East, what the government of the United States will do in the Middle East, they will, we are willing and they are doing to you. It just looks a little bit different. Here's a story that comes out. Did you hear all the places, folks? It just wasn't in Africa. Okay, this is what governments are willing to do. If you're going to have to get the HPV, uh, how are you going to be guaranteed when you go look at their dang data sheet and it says that death could be a result or other things, why don't you take that data sheet of the HPV and go stick it in the face of these uh, Florida legislators uh, against your life? Say, so you're going to guarantee this and this story? How do we know that those hormones aren't in here? They're going to kill people. They're going to kill people. They're going to kill future people. You criminal. So, do you have a word in your mouth, or do you just whine? I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't know what to tell more to tell y'all. You can argue with me. Like, it tend to be more and more people argue with me, and uh, I don't see much going on around that. Everyone can argue with me. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, and then you can show me from what you're doing that you can uh, prove me wrong. If that becomes your objective once you start getting involved. See, I become irrelevant at that point, don't I? Next thing I should hear is once you get uh, down on your road, I should hear you broadcasting on, uh, on, a, on, a, on your own broadcast uh, on your specialty. Why don't I hear that? Yeah, I don't know if anybody appreciates the amount of work it takes uh, to put... Uh, to, to put on a, even a simple broadcast. And what I've had to do just to be able to continue the broadcast because it takes that kind of work. And I hope be, with the compromises that, that I've done, I I've, I've do uh, at least a sufficient job uh, to pull out the things that uh, look like they're important and give you some basic direction um, for those of you that choose to, to go do that. That's all I can offer. So fighting with me is really just wasting time. It's looking for an excuse not to fight yourself. <clears throat> on the thing that you're, you you would like to choose. Uh, then we have the things that, remember, uh, we talked to John Rappaport, we talked about the viruses, we talked about the vaccines, we talked about all this, the vaccines weren't really uh, having anything to, to work with because there's really no flu. Uh, here's a story right the next week um, that was that now speaks to the to what John Rappaport was actually talking about, that of the 61,000 people that died of the flu, only 257 actually had the flu when they tested. The rest had uh, something else. Well, this is what it might have been. Uh, point is, they don't necessarily test for it. 
and it looks like a lot of other things. There's another bad virus going around, and it's not the flu. It looks like the flu. It feels like the flu. It even puts patients into the hospital like the flu can. Okay, you got, you're hearing this, folks. Something that looks like something else. The government has made that the cover, the stocking horse, for something that isn't going on, getting you all riled up to have to go do it, giving them and empowering them with this thing. That the legislators in Florida and California and all these other states that are doing this, the power to bring it on. And you have to be there. You have to be there to show them the criminal that he's been caught or she has been caught. This is how you do it. So I've been telling you all these, these years. Uh, there's another virus out there that could be added, adding to the seasonal misery, but it's not being identified. The virus is called adenovirus, and it can cause very severe flu-like symptoms. It's so risky, the United States military vaccinates recruits against two major strains. So there's more. But most people are not vaccinated against adenovirus, and doctor's offices don't test for it. A doctor wants to change that. I won't do it. Just read more. Uh, there's something that looks like the flu. Here's Listen, folks. We kind of hear this. We kind of we do this to ourselves, too. If it walks, I've said it. If it walks like a duck. It quacks like a duck. lays an egg like a duck. It's a duck. Here's one. It looks like a flu. Acts like a flu. Puts you in the hospital like a flu. And it ain't the flu. And so, be careful on what we do to ourselves in these uh, neat little statements and memes that we don't overrun and overlook a, a, be, a bigger truth that that's really literally can kill us. Uh, so, we have things that are going on misdiagnosed by the medical profession and probably on purpose because it's likely there's not much that can actually happen. And when they don't have you focused on the right thing, on the right situation, they are more empowered to try the next experiment on you while you pay for it somehow uh, through some mechanism, whether it be at your life, your time, you're sitting in the in, uh, sitting in their offices, getting more colds and more viruses that are not going to be treated by their information, uh, by their medicine, and the side effects that come with it all. Instead of you just working it out to put to make your body healthy again, uh, put it in a state of hygiene and in a way that you work uh, work to keep that thing from interfering with you. Uh, I can only I keep saying that. I keep thinking to myself, boy, this has been a year. I've been fortunate so far. I do what I can. I've been really fortunate. And I just don't know what to say more than what I do. And I've told you about what that is. That real simple. And so far, so good. So, again, it's, uh, what, do you, what do you bring yourself susceptible to? Uh, so, there's something out there that may not be the flu. And so, if you think it is and you're trying to fight that thing, you, you're, you're giving yourself the wrong tools. You're not doing that targeted attack like we find out that may be a new resolution to cancers where they throw the unmodified, uh, where they throw a T cell in and then they provide another, um, another uh, infusion of essentially a, a, the T cell uh, to pro proliferate now with the knowledge what it couldn't see before. It was the tumor was transparent to it now has the, the view of what that tumor is it's after, and then they replicate. It tells the body's amazing how it does this, and then they go out with the new information, and they start targeting the same, uh, essentially the same resistance that they were able to see now that they were injected inside the tumor. Really fascinating stuff. Don't let them do that to you. You need to stay back and, uh, well, keep yourself out of the mix, and then understand that it, you may not be being faced with what you think you're being faced with. You again, that it's, this is a pretty interesting theme this uh, this week. I didn't I didn't think about it, but it's been developing this this uh, broadcast. You have a millstone around your neck, a mental millstone. In fact, that's the title. To, I'm going to put that as a title. You, our mental millstone. We put them on. We hang them around our neck, and then we complain. And this gets a self-inflicted wound. It's whatever you know, whatever name we can call it. We do it to ourselves, and then we we complain, like we like to complain. Now, I think we are better than that, and I think after a while you get tired of being sick, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe we're kind of mentally messed up. Maybe we like to do that. I don't, I don't know. I don't, have a, I don't have a sense about that part. So, is a flu, it looks like a flu, it, takes, it, sets, it lays an egg like a flu, but it's not the flu. Uh, interesting observation of how 
the system will talk to you in ways that's not the target, and it's done for other reasons. As I see, it's really just the bottom line, ultimately. Why would people do that to each other? This is really a, si a real sickness in people as well. I don't mean just being sick. I mean, this is a real, to exploit people like this. I, I don't even know where that, I don't even know how to say any more than just this. I just think about that. I go, yeah, what is that? How sick are we as a people to allow this stuff? It's really mind blowing. It, it's not even in. I don't. Even, it doesn't even register in my spirit. It's so confusing. It's oh, that would almost conf, it confuses me into inaction. That's another problem. Where do you begin with that? No, because the problem is because it's inherent now. It's now in us. It's us. It is us, folks? We're, we're on our own terrorists. And we allow it, and we engage it. We make up all these reasons why our cause is the one we need to go against the established cause. Not realizing that there's parts of that established cause that are there that caused your existence to today, that kept you there, kept you at a certain level of peace that you shouldn't just destroy. You know, cancers destroy the system, and that system is then destroyed, and even then the cancer dies. Well, unless it's got this mechanism like it turns into a fungus and waits for the next foot to come along on that blood spot. Ma nature is amazing. So we have um, when the flu is not the flu. Maybe be careful how you be careful what you're fighting. Be careful what you told you've been fighting. It's my message to you. Be careful what you set out to fight because you may find out that it's not what it is. It's a false front. You put on a millstone, a mental millstone that's going to forever defeat you keep you inactive, and when you get active, you're going to get beat up, and then become inactive, because you don't, no one wants to get beat up. And I, in a way, that's to, to what happened to me. I realized some things, I told you this, about 2005, when I got collected up so they could destroy my um, my child services uh, uh, bit, a documentary about how child services is used, the system of child services is used to, to harm, uh, for child abuse purposes. And now we hear it today, what's going on. They uh, the only thing I now see was they collected me up, put me away for a while, and in, in, put me in jail. I didn't get any justice at all. They wouldn't listen to any paperwork. I was pretty good then about writing paperwork. They wouldn't listen to any of it. When I got out, my uh, somehow, uh, I didn't know then, but the project I was working on was destroyed. And so I, when I was in there, uh, when they had me handled, uh, new insight, whole new insight. I realized how we were all sitting in an open-air prison. It was just a matter of, the amount of confinement. And I said, well, I don't really like live, uh, living in an open-air prison. How am I going to be that, that, that uh, effective, cranky prisoner? And so I started to relook at what I understood and how to change and changed what I, how I approached a lot of this stuff. Uh, and I realized very quickly there's nothing you can do when you're in a cage, so you might as well work out ways that you don't have to get in the cage and still are effective. And, and that's up to each one of this. If you don't see this thing that way, then maybe it's not important to you. But I see it as a universal problem. I see it as the universal condition of man. And so we're we're told a lot of things that aren't so. Uh, we're not able to see. We're setting down paths that we shouldn't be on. Uh, that give somebody profit. They take advantage of this. Um, I want to transfer now over how the government uh, leads us down the path of what it wants to do. It causes divisions and constructions that don't make sense. It causes the divisions it can use to exploit in the future. It has the uh, it, it works for the government's bottom line, essentially to the fulfillment of all exactions of every kind uh, and no other. It says it right there in your civil rights law, so called uh, your equal rights as well. And I told you one other thing that they're talking about with this uh, so so called legalization of pot is that they're giving us the wrong information and we're accepting it. Uh, we had fought. Uh, I say we. Those that people that have fought for so long to legalize uh, this were on a crash course with reality, and we're starting to see it. And I told you all, be careful on your states. I would offer to you to consider, do not, you have to, this is a risk management thing for you all, be careful to embrace uh, the growing of marijuana, in particular on the uh, recreational side, that for the time being, that you need to really focus maybe to get to the medical side and if those of you that have had the right of recreational, if you focus your recreational really on more of its medical need for you, instead of just talking about it recreationally, you're going to, regardless of the registration that you use it, now that you have the right uh, to grow, 
within the constraint of even the few plants that you get, that the purpose is not for recreational. Your purpose is to help you uh, medically. That that would be your uh, one of the main protectors I think you'd have going into the future. Now, this is a couple years ago. Now let me show you how this does work out that way. Uh, very predictable. How did how did it how did I predict it? It's not a prediction. It's an insight. Uh, I predicted it by reading reading the black and white about this legalization, which I I've told you it's a problem, big problem. Puts control back into the state and then taxes you for it, like all of this stuff does. You had to decriminalize it to the point, not decriminalize it as you lessen the criminality. You got to uncriminalize it, non-criminalize it, and, and that didn't happen. Now, once I think Vermont might have actually Vermont might be a state that may have just done that. They may have just non-criminalized it, which was really the path you needed to follow. And here's why. And here's the problem. Uh, here's what starts to come down. I told you they're probably going to come after uh, the uh, the growth, uh, just growing it. Uh, the feds, the feds were coming in. Uh, remember, they Obama said we're going to release uh, relieve uh, uh, some energy. Well, here it comes, and, and right out of the state, I told you that was set up to do this. They were going to do this law, but then the feds are going to come in and attack you. And right now, the Supreme Court has allowed medical marijuana. That was the reason why I said. Stay in the medical side, even if you do have the right to grow. I also said that they're probably going to come in and make a mess out of it all. Uh, when the Fed's going to come back in and, and make a big target out of your, because your property is going to be liable underneath the non-medical stuff. I saw that sitting right in the law. That wasn't a prediction because they predicted that for me in the way they were going to treat the law for legalization. You had to just read the black and white to see it. Here it is, folks. And they move fast anymore. Federal prosecutor may Crack down on Oregon's legal pot trade. Pot trade. Now, there's some insight into this report you need to really read. Uh, whether you're in Oregon or not, this speaks to what I was telling you, the frailty that's been created by the division between the federal to the state. The trade is in commerce. Uh, the, uh, the Wheat Act case of 1938 says that somehow, and this is what, you, what I've been telling you to be to protect against, your production is in commerce. That's a lie. But that's what the Bar Association courts have done. They've conglomerated everything into a regulable activity when it's not. And this is where there's what I keep telling you. You have to understand where you are in this battlefield and don't allow them to defame you. Don't allow them to impute any status that's not supposed to be there and make sure that you make them prove it before they, that they have the right to first and that they can prove it secondarily that you are what they claim without your consent. And then you bring forward everything that says that they didn't have no right to do it. Here, because it's legalized, you only have the permission of the government. And we know the Supreme Court has, has kind of shut the door on medical side. That was all I told you where to go. Oregon's top, now they're coming like I told you they would. But we have a question. They, they keep the conundrum. Will he or won't he? May he or may he not? This is to keep you all with scared rabbits. Uh, but there's going to be some people going to be made examples as well. So here's what you've got to be careful of. Oregon's top federal prosecutor took aim Friday at what he called the massive overproduction of legal marijuana that he says has leaked out into the black market, attracting drug cartels, causing environmental damage, and endangering children. Well, he just wrapped up how you do a U.N. insurrection, didn't he? Perfect. So this is a this is a big setup, uh, but they're utilizing the so-called cause of this black market stuff and the, the endangering uh, children, which I made a Twitter comment. How is he can come up with this fraud? I called it fraud that it would endanger children. Everyone has the right to grow so many plants. Now what has he done? He's imposed upon everyone that grows plants that have a, a have they call them their the state's children that he's that you're endangering them. He's now brought this to everybody's house that grows dope, like I told you they would. And remember, the forfeiture laws have been reinvigorated right ahead of this. Please take note. This is this is a serious notice here. What they're thinking to do, and they keep it as a question. They bring up environmental damage, drug cartels, and endangering women, children, and the indigenous. Is all I hear. I hear. The war on drugs. Causing environmental, this is just environmental, this guy's just an environmental terrorist saying that production is trade. That's a lie. But that's what they're setting up against you. Uh, U.S. Attorney Billy, Billy Williams, that would be William Williams, wouldn't it be? I told attendees of his marijuana summit, 
attendees of his marijuana summit on Friday that his office will ramp up collection and scrutiny of data on black market trafficking in, order, in Oregon, where recreational marijuana has been legal since 2014. But the state has already approved initiatives aimed at the problem, such as seed-to-sale tracking systems. Registration is confiscation, folks. All they need to, they need to know they know need they need to know where you are so they can come after you. That's how this all works. The summit included law enforcement officials from across the state, representatives from Oregon's legal cannabis industry, who may be in on it, folks, and the cat governor Kate Brown, who spoke in support of Williams' plan despite her assertions last month that U.S. Attorney Jeff Sessions had quote pulled the rug out from under the legal marijuana industry close quote when he rescinded the Obama-era legal protections for the cannabis industry in states that had approved such businesses. Remember, Kate Brown's an attorney. All right, they're in on it. This all comes from the top, and I showed you how that was when I was talking about the legalizations of these things. Discussed all of this already. It's on record. He didn't say, well, Billy William, William Williams, uh, <laughs> he didn't say how his office plan to crack down on what he called Oregon's, quote, identifiable and formidable overproduction and diversion problem. So here he is, he's titling this stuff something that he's going to get his teeth into to justify his theft of people's ability to do this, and what they're after is your property, essentially. They knew what was going to happen here. Give you a bunch of hungry dogs and throw in a piece of meat. You think what happens? And then, then they get some people that are grabbing a little too much. They're going to take those people out. But they're not after those people either in the industry. That's why the industry was a stakeholder in that meeting, and you weren't. But he claimed concerns about the environmental effects of wholesale cannabis farming and the potential for Oregon teens to get their hands on the black market surplus spurred him to act, folks. I don't know about a black market surplus, actually, where everybody, every house has the right to grow, I think, what, four to four or five plants, whatever it is. This is a setup for the takedown. Uh, disappointing to see, but planned. I mean, just predicted. He goes, this is the fact. And my responsibility is to work on our with our state partners to do something about it. State partners is collaboration is a felony against you. That was our Jefferson Mining District versus Kids Hopper, previous, uh, the previous uh, exposed governor. We identified that in 2013, this very thing that they're doing right now. And this is the problem about people not seeing what we've done or agreeing what we've done or the, not seeing the state will not agree with what you've done. And the state does nothing it's supposed to. They talk about obligations and duties. The governor and the attorney general of that state failed miserably in multiple obligations and duties. The law bestowed, their own code bestows upon them. So this is all hypo, uh, hypo, hypocrisy. This is all to the ends justify the means, and they're in this to take you down. Uh, this, little, or, or this little story, the uh, report, uh, tells me a ton. Uh, and interestingly... An initiative, local initiative, to tax the producers of, of marijuana. And again, they are talking about the trade side, but there's no limitation for a cop to have probable cause to come and violate you. And it was just told to us just before this came out by the local sheriff, by the local commissioner, they're going to specially tax marijuana, and the money they get, they're going to give back to the sheriff so he can go out after black market sales. How was the language so consistent if there's not a plan on this, folks? I mean, I don't get out much. And I don't really, I don't really, um, well, I don't get out much, so I don't get to see many people. I don't know anything about this industry, but I get to hear quite a bit. I get to look around and see who's doing what. I see a lot of property that's going to be stolen. I see a lot of people that uh, stepped into this thing and didn't pay attention. And yet we're seeing consistent discussion between the local government and the state government by the federal imposition. Consistent with the way I said, what, two years, what, 2004, it's before we got into that, I said, it, was, it must have been 2013, 2014, early, 13, early 2014, I think it was. 
that this would be the eventuality because of the way that rules laws were made. They're taking this up and they're exploiting it. The producer becomes a slave to their tax debt. Then they can ch they say they're going after a certain uh, production, but everybody is amenable to this. And they give the money to the people uh, to the people who are going to be the enforcers to come and steal your property, and they just relieve the the feds just relieve the restriction on forfeiture. Well, I don't know what more to tell you folks. This is not something that's cool. Uh, even if you agree with me, to, you can't not just look at this. Well, I'm really disappointed when the DEA had their had their public comment. Why well, I didn't see a bunch of people saying, "Look what I just filed." We're going to get in their face. No, this is a setup. This whole thing is a setup from the beginning to end. And I see nobody doing anything in their own protection. And that's my problem for you all. To me, I mean, at some level, I don't, except that I now see that the marijuana is uh, medically, literally medically viable. It's not a question. If I had, I mean, just my herbal senses told me it was, absolutely. The extent was is mind-blowing now. So this, it's a felony against mankind. What's going on about this? So that's my position now. But I don't. I don't have a point to grow it. Uh, even it's funny. I mean, I can do it. We can do it. I don't do it. I don't have really a need for it either in a herbal sense. I only do the herbs I think I might need. And so to me, it's really an inert type of thing. But you can see the damage, the harm being set up for you all, y'all. And those of you that do rely on it, you need to step up. Because it starts to bleed over. Remember a couple of reports we did. Medical marijuana people had their stuff taken. And they didn't get it back. And in one case they did, but it was two years late. What were the buds like then? That's a joke. These people do this to harm you and hurt you and they laugh about it. You need to be ahead of the game. I, I, you know, maybe you don't need to do anything. I keep saying it, but I, I realize, no, you have the right to do what you're going to do. Folks, if you've got any interest in any of this... And my interest is just for you all that need it, and on the medical side. To me, I don't know about the recreational. Sometimes you even need, people think it's recreational. It's not. You've you got a defect. You're, 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 fixing a, you're fixing a hurt. That's, that's what these things start to do. It takes a different mind to put it in a place. And not, not, all, not everybody does that. Not everybody's hurt. But you put it in a place. If you're not someone trying to fill a hole like an addiction might, uh, you have a different approach too. So I'm not talking about those of you that have a purpose. I mean, there's a definite purpose. But I've seen so many people, oh, we're having fun here. But there's not. They're filling a hole. It's a, it's a really sad thing at some level, like any addiction. And so to me, it, it's, there's not really much recreational use at some point, really, in my mind. Oh, yeah, you'll say that it's fun or whatever. You have fun with it. And that's fine, because it has that side effect, or can. But we now realize there's the CBD side. That's fascinating to me. That's actually more fascinating than the, than the THC. And then understanding that the balance between them has a distinction. This is a really interesting material. Tunable, if I can say it. Okay, So to me, it's, a, it's a more of a technical look. But I'm distant from that part. All I know is I look out and I see everybody being set up for the takedown. And, and you're going to... And you're, you're accepting those liabilities without nary a question. And I, this is the crickets. This is the crickets. They're coming, folks. I told you they were coming. They're coming. They aren't telling you how they're coming. They're not telling you when. It's just going to happen. Um, this is, I, 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 there's more to say if I could lay out some things. I don't have that before me. As I think about things that are being said, like in the community, the commissioners, their, how they phrase the things they do, it's all telltale that this is a setup to, for a takedown, and there's some insiders that knew that. Uh, people that, well, I'll, I'll, I'll finish that right there. And I and I don't think it was unknown by those people because you could see it in the in the in the writing. You could see it in the promotion, and you could see it in the writing. And uh, apparently, this state of Oregon uh, that they were talking about here, and the prosecutor has felt it's more important. Well, because it does grow so well. It's more important to take down people here than to leave, let's say, Colorado alone to profit, the billions they have. Billions. I mean, this is astonishing values. No, don't let Oregon profit by billions and let hands off and let it go where it's going to go. No, we're going to come in and thug all the people with property in Oregon. Why? When you look around, you see the environmentalists, 
This is the problem he's talking about the environmental harm. It's an environmentalist terror he's going to promote. They're trying to rewild Oregon. It's just that simple. I talk about this as well. This is all integrated at some level as well. Uh, I would also say that the uh, thing with Malheur and the ranchers that you hear and all these things like the Klamath, uh, it's all going to be integrated. They go after, they're trying to get rid of property. They're going to take, they're going to use any excuse to come in and start stealing the property now under the color that they're stopping the cartels and saving your children. The same children have access to the dope you just grew, uh, four plants, uh, four pounds, or the heck you're not supposed to have, uh, because the plants are, really are so prolific. But you're not doing any cartels, but it's endangering the, the children that you have because you're a child abuser. And if you don't think that's possible, just go to California. I think it was, I just said. I don't even know if I have it on the tabs again. I keep thinking about that. Yeah, it is up there. Yep, California. I'll just pull it right on up right now. That, I've said it twice. I should have had it for earlier. California overreacts and presumes every homeschooling parent is a child abuser. You're a ward of the, you're a, you're a custodian of the state as a parent, and you're a child. You're a ward of the state as your child, and you're the abuser just for homeschooling is what, how they're treating the marijuana in Oregon. And I guess my problem is not even about this marijuana. That was all predictable. It's that you're not, you're not really responding to it. it. It may not be just Oregon. It is right now. This is the target state. I tell you, this is the pioneer. Oregon is, this Oregon here is the pioneer police state. And the only other state that could be matching it, I think, was Massachusetts. And they did it through their education system. They're, they're like bookends on the nation. So Oregon's a primary... Pioneer police state. And you're, I can't tell you how uh, any better than to show you that this is the first place they started to unveil their new exactions of every kind. And what that actually means is they're going after the property. They set this up as a legalism to then use the other legalisms of the property forfeiture, which they've justified to themselves. And you are doing contraband. As I told you all about that. You don't have to go far to see that. But uh, California overreacts. The school presumes uh, every homeschooler parent is a child abuser. You're a child. He just told you that you grow dope uh, and it's not medical. You're a child abuser. He just told you that, folks in Oregon. So please listen. Please start thinking in these regards on how you're going to protect yourself. Get the facts together that, uh, that you're going to need. You can't stop that they don't start against you even though you're not engaged in cartels. That's just the cover. It won't matter about all that. California is seeking to treat homeschool families as presumptive child abusers. What happened to the presumption of innocence, folks? And this is, you see, the adulteration of your nation and its laws. It's not the nation and its laws. It's the people in it that are not giving it uh, giving it honor and uh, um, fidelity, not faith, good full faith and credit to the law. You have a legal system that will back this up because nobody knows how to bring the, the right part. And ahead of time, as soon as you see it now, not after the fact. This is the other discussion I had with my friend yesterday. Oh, minors wait way too late. I say make a record and I get eyes rolling. Oh, we don't want to do all that. No, you want to see, think you can disgust the guy, the punk with a firearm in front of you stealing your stuff. You'd rather do it out in the field. You think you can talk him out of it. That's the wrong thing to do. In fact, it's gotten worse down in California because now that the, the, there's the precedent is so bad. We're talking about that, so you have to make a record ahead of time in, in, in those uh, these presumptively arrogant states that they think that they are gods because they're the law and they're sovereign. Well, they're not. They're not if you set up the frame right. But you have to do that ahead of time. And I have to say, it took me a little bit to figure out. I said, we have a problem. You're a minor in California. How do you go by this? Well, I eventually, listening to a few more details, I came up with the uh, uh, at least the beginnings of, a, of an addressment. And it wasn't new. It was just re retaking the way you do it. I've told you about my experience with my, my uh, the co-owner of the claim on a river, uh, the, how we dealt with the sheriff there. I took the very, I decided, came to me while I was listening to the, the discussion of what was going on in California. I said, why don't you just take what we did there in the, in the, in the uh, river and put it on paper? Let's start like that. And so we st I developed a way to get at this for people before you put yourself in jeopardy. I don't know why I get resistance on this, and I don't know why people don't do it. Uh, but we're in that day, folks. I've been telling you about all this. I don't know what more to say about that. 
if you want to fight with me, you're, you're fighting, you're, you're swinging at ghosts. You're swinging at windmills. It's not me you should be worried about. I'm not trying to take you, I'm not trying to call you a, a, a child abuser. I'm not trying to uh, take away the medicine or the, even the recreational smoke that you do, whatever it is, sticks, whatever you do. I'm not the one doing that. I'm not trying to take your rights or your opportunities. I'm trying to show you how they've been stolen and how you're going to have to start working to get them back because it was a republic if you could keep it and you didn't. So you don't think if the legislature overreacts and now they're going to force HPV virus in Florida, they're going to steal, come in and steal the, uh, use the pot to steal your property in California, and then they, uh, in California they call you a ho homeschooling child abuser. You don't think they're doing that with the uh, marijuana in, or in Oregon by saying they're going to protect the children, the teenagers that have access to it? Well, that extends to the cigarettes and the alcohol, doesn't it? That's state stuff, isn't it? It still happens. So this is a pretty open pretty large problem that they've opened up that I think uh, the prairie dogs haven't noticed. They did. They, they see it. The uh, prairie dogs notice the shadow. They just don't know what it means. And, and I'm sorry to be the one to have to tell you that it's not, not a good thing. Uh, and then I'm really sorry to hear that maybe you're not going to respond to that. And I always wonder why, because we have so many people, not everyone has to, but we do have enough people that we should be able to cover all this stuff in a very formidable and, and factual ways that are really efficient. That's the, uh, another thing. I mean, it doesn't take, once you see this, it's not hard to get at. And so here we have these attacks coming from all over the country, and then we get this little statement, which kind of caught my eye. I could care less about it, partly, uh, but we did hear it. Uh, Trump says it will be hard to unify the country without a major event. And this was just a promotion of his statement. I just was, when I looked at that, I didn't read about the story. Uh, this is just so indicative of what was talk, told of us. Uh, in, the prior, in the past that my memory doesn't hold all the details to. Uh, a president told us that, didn't it? Uh, uh, Reagan, am I, is Reagan or the one that said that? They needed to have a big event to unify everybody. Wow. Is that a prediction? Well, I don't know, but it sure doesn't sound good. doesn't sound good. In the way things have gone nuts, it doesn't sound good. And they're promoting it. PBS is a story from uh, Cryptagon reciting a PBS report about that. This is a public, mainstream, uh, liberal, we want to tell you this is what he said. And I don't know that I like what I heard here, here. <laughs> I don't know about you. It just sounds a little bit ominous. Does it mean it actually is going to happen? No. But this is what they start doing to people. This is how they start to encroach. It's, you need the government. And most people believe that. And I would have to uh, assert that uh, some of the listeners that listen behind the woodshed, they think so too, even though they argue against that imposition. And I say that because you then, without proper action, you work as the accessory to that crime against you, and you just complain about it. It's a self-inflicted wound over and over and over, and they're giving us full notice ahead of time of what's coming down. How could I do this back in 2014? Before the uh, run-up to the legalization, to tell you that they would be coming, and they come in three years now, to come and set up the provisions, and it makes it justify, they're going to protect your children, folks. They're going to protect you from the drug cartels that have come up. Oh, and your environment's being poisoned. Well, we just talk about the vaccines being poisoned, and the, and, the, and the radio waves being poisoned, and your food being poisoned, and your food liners being poisoned. This is quite the hypocrisy that we agree to. And I hear crickets. 70,000 New York permit holders are now felons for failing to register handguns. That's another opportunity to show you that the government don't care about a whole lot. They put it on you to do the thing. You're not considered a felon. Now you're not supposed to be able to have the gun uh, because of the way they set up the felonies. And there was not supposed to be an argument that uh, by the government to be able to set up anything that prohibit, prohibits you from having the gun. Registration is confiscation, and then they tell you if you don't register, you're going to take it. Folks, maybe the Second Amendment says I have the gun for the, to protect myself against the very one imposing the reg registration. And I, maybe I don't want the government to know whether or not I've got a arm to keep and bear in protection against its imposition. On Thursday of this week, more than 70,000 New York pistol permit holders woke up as felons lawbreakers. What was their crime? They didn't register their handguns with the state. Now, 
Why on God's or green earth would they have to do that? Emperor, uh, line that out. Governor Andrew Cuomo rammed through the New York uh, Secure Ammunition and Firearms Enforcement Act in 2013. This insidious law requires pistol permit holders to register their handguns and recertify their licenses, licenses, licenses every five years. Failure to do so is a Class E felony. Let me go back to the why I repeated license. Why did I repeat license, folks? Go to New York. There's people in New York. Go look at the license. The license is under and defined under the administrative procedures, and the license is probably defined as a, a permission. The license is a permission, certification, registration, of, uh, or whatever they want to issue uh, for a, to pursue a trade, occupation, and profession. Those of you underneath this gun, and it may be more than 70,000, that means that about 400,000 or so, just short of 400,000, are actually registered. You ask them, how is that trade occupation, how is your uh, right to bear arms, uh, your right to protect yourself against them, uh, a trade occupation or profession, subject to a license in the state underneath that definition? That's your job if you choose to pick it up. You start showing that they can't criminalize a right, and they can't criminalize something uh, uh, underneath a false pretense of commercial nexus in order to do it. So I'm going to have to be, probably just, there's more to say on all this. Um, we can go through, there's an opinion that starts in the next paragraph. But uh, to me, these are notices of what you'd failed to do in the beginning and what you still get to do. And you get to call them out if you want to, or you just become the, the servile people uh, that you do is, uh, you crickets. It's pretty simple at some point. You can argue with me again. Everyone wants to argue with me. Uh, but the fact is, is next week you will have done nothing, and next week you have done nothing, because you, you, the history repeats itself. Each week repeats that you will do nothing. Nothing right. Nothing proper or more proper. Nothing you can't know. Uh, again, you're going to do more proper. You'll, be, you'll learn as you go. You learn nothing to sit and contemplate your navel with all your knowledge. It's really, uh, people don't get that. Engage the world that you see. I don't like that it's wrong. This is so far from my psyche, I can't even tell you. But in, you have to engage the world that's been p imposed upon you, that's used as a tool of exploitation against you. Otherwise, you really don't have a, a, a complaint to make. You are the accessory to the crime against you. That's your own felony. So instead of uh, accepting the imposition of a felony, you call out how that was not correct, and you do it in a more proper way. The prohibition is a prohibition against the against that regulation, and their license doesn't rise up in authority high enough to interfere with that. In other words, they don't have the right to declare your rights after an issuance because they don't do an issuance at the prohibition. And the, pro, and the issuance is only for a commercial act. Based on their based on their own internal code, which is their administrative procedures. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said inspires you, may gives you new insight, how to work it out, how to work things together, how to work for a better day, how, how to be the example that you, you intend to be anyway. I think all of y'all, I think you do intend that. I just we want to get you to do better. Uh, Grimner, thank you very much, folks. Donate to RLM. We need the uh, server costs to be picked up. This is the time of year. Puxitani Phil says so. Uh, whether or not he sees his shadow. And uh, UCY.TV, Jules, thank you very much for what you do in the syndicated uh, dailies and uh, or the syndicated today and the dailies and the recast podcast. Uh, folks, uh, appreciate it on uh, what all you can uh, do for yourselves and everyone else. And I'll be here next week. Tech Biffs are nature of willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. 
son. You just opened a whole case of whoop ass. 